Welcome back to another installment of Julian's Random Projects. Um, this is a continued um, series on, or continuation of, taking a look at these little 750 watt modified sine wave uh, inverters by, uh, by Schumacher. Um, they seem to be pretty nifty. Um, the other one, another one that I got up and running I've been impressed with. Um, the, it runs pretty quiet until you get like 40 watts going, or it runs silent actually until you get 40 watts going and then the fan kicks on. Uh, they've got uh, two ports AC out. Uh, you can cycle between uh, showing your wattage. This is kind of a guesstimation. It's not very accurate. Um, and it's also got a cool little USB plug, uh, which I had to go and buy one. I mean, of course, I could make a little uh, bit of USB cable with a cut and a, and a shunt in there, or like a 0.1 ohm resistor, and, and make my, take my own measurements. But you know, when somebody sells a cool little thing called the Charger Doctor, yeah, you just buy it. It's it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so today we'll be testing this other one that we repaired in the last video uh, that just had a, bro a blown fuse in it. Pretty straightforward. Um, replaced it with uh, some 40 amp fuses, two of them together, but that makes 80 amps. Uh, they came with 45, so that would make 90 amps. Um, so we're uh, leaning more towards the side of caution with the 40s. Plus, that's all my hardware store had. So <laughs> or the, the biggest that they had before you start getting into different form factors. Um, I also picked up one of these little circuit breakers, which fits into the same blade types. Uh, I saw some other uh, folks on YouTube using these uh, that seemed like a pretty cool solution so I'm not replace you know buying a lot of different uh, fuses or you know popping them and having to replace them this one just trips um, I haven't actually forced it to trip yet so I don't I don't know how that works or if it's gonna have like weird bouncing effects I'm not really sure but th these are used in cars uh, for um, motors usually like windshield wipers or a uh, power seat or something that might pull a lot of current but isn't necessarily bad you know like there's edge cases where it would have popped and they want to let it reset because they figured it was something that was commonly going to pop so that's a little uh, actually i don't know why i'm pointing it out we're not even using it today <laughs> um yeah so let's uh let's get this thing powered up and off screen here i've got a heating element uh which is a like a little room heater uh, we'll be plugging into this guy so let's uh how do we press on okay so press and hold does a quick little bit check of some kind, and it's up. Um, I'm, I haven't, I haven't exper experimented with a lot of these modified sine wave inverters, but it pulls almost, uh, you know, like five to six watts doing nothing. Um, that's not ideal. That's that's a quite a bit of power. Uh, that's like half of an amp, and um, you know, so let's say you've got a, a hundred amp hour battery, as you know, two hundred hours. That thing's gonna just be dead. So, you know, if you don't put a battery tender on a battery, then this thing just being powered on all the time would drain it. So you have to remember to either turn it off or put a kill switch somewhere else or, you know, interrupt for the 12 volt line coming in. Um, you yeah, know, so first thing I like to do now that it's powered up, use our handy dandy multimeter. There we go. <laughs> 120 volts AC. That's perfect. Um, let's see, oh then, yeah, here's the thing where it cycles through volts, the, um, voltage here, the DC volts of, of your input, AC volt output, it's 120, that's accurate, and the wattage that's currently being drawn right now, we're at zero, obviously, and next thing is start plugging stuff in, so, um, we're going to try our... USB port. That's pretty good. Showing five volts. Of course, it's upside down for you. My apologies. Um, and it's also zero amps. So, let's grab a iPhone charger and plug in an iPhone. Oh, it turned it on. Okay. <laughs> It was already off. Uh, so it, it, it dropped the voltage down for a moment. It kind of sagged. 
and then now it's back up at 4.9. It's pulling 700 milliamps, almost 800 milliamps, which is probably about right for this thing while it's booting. There, now it's booted into the OS, and so it'll probably negotiate for something a little bit higher, like one amp would be my guess, unless this battery's topped off. No, it's not right. All right so it's only pulling 800 milliamps. Uh, this is supposed to be able to pull an amp, and that tells me that it's probably um, something to do with the, the pins on this um, receptacle, the, the, the D plus and the D minus pins of the, the data lines, so though it's not actually using data in this case. Um, the uh, iOS devices specifically use those pins to determine what type of charger it's plugged into. It's 5 volts. 4.2, you saw it sag it down, and also this one is uh, 800 milliamps, 7.8. So I, I'm, I'm guessing that's the limit of this guy. Um, I don't remember what the, what it was advertised at. I don't have the data sheet in front of me, but um, I'll check that out and maybe put a little annotation here later. Uh, but it works. I mean, it is charging, although it slowly <laughs> it is charging. So probably not as good as just a regular little you know, 12 volt to, to a, a designed charger that would do two amps, that's probably what I would use. And if that's the case, later I'll go in and desolder the USB port here and see if that's where our five watts is coming from of, of consumption of the thing just being on. Um, maybe we'll get two watts there. I mean, two watts is worth hunting down and killing if you're never going to use that USB port. So let's start plugging stuff into this guy. On the side. Yeah. Oh, that's right. This one's gonna beep. Ugh. Let's do it for a moment until it beeps at us, and then we'll stop. <laughs> Alrighty, Jesus. Goodness. Okay. <laughs> Low battery. Uh, I didn't watch to see what it sagged down to. It doesn't look like it sagged down to much, um, but that's I mean, that's 500 watts. I'm trying. I'm asking for it to 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 yank on right away. Uh, that's quite a bit. Um, let me make sure this battery's nice and topped off, and then we'll pick it up again. Okay, I'm back. I checked the state of charge on this battery, and it is like 90%, uh, which should be good for what we're doing. Turned out that the wires I, were I was using were too thin of a gauge uh, to get that much current going through. So I've got some much beefier cables going nice and tight on here and like clamped right on. So um, should be good to go now. Uh, let's see if there's any voltage sag on the AC line when I kick on this. Of course, this is going to beep at us annoyingly. I'll be removing that little speaker later. Because uh, the other model has a like a 10 volt cutoff, so it actually shuts this thing down when it hits when it gets the battery down to 10 volts, uh, and that's a, that's pretty ideal for my situation because I've got a little monitor, uh, you know, a, a state of charge monitor on it, so I'll be able to stop it early if I'd like to, or let's say I fall asleep and I'm using it with you know to run a bunch of lights or something um, in an emergency situation, then the inverter itself will cut off at 10 volts. And protect itself so um, let's scroll down to watts 575 watts that's pretty good uh, this thing's rated for 750 it's holding its own there voltage on the AC side dropped a little bit that's expected um, as long as it doesn't go below 110 I'd be okay with that uh, let's see what else can we plug into this guy we have lying around Lights fit with this guy. There we go. Oh, oh yeah. Complain about that, why don't you? Oh, uh, <laughs> I won't know. I won't know my total. I gotta do the guesstimate. I don't want to do that. That. I know some people are starting to cringe about now. I'm like uh, putting Y adapters and plugging in heaters and stuff. But 
Um, you know, it's a bench test. It's not what we plan. Oh, I actually plan to use. Should be fine. Uh, so now we get some current going. Push from those lights. Oh yeah. Nothing. All right, so every once in a while, this one, I mentioned it earlier, or I mentioned it in another video where I was testing the uh, a smaller inverter, that the modified sine wave does not do so hot on uh, this particular kilowatt. It's actually kind of warm. Um, let's set it aside before I break it. Uh, it definitely does not like it. We'll use the goofy watt meter that's on here. It's not accurate, but it'll do. Alright, these are just the light bulbs I've gotten on here. So there's 150. Uh, so, if, you know, if this, if I already, I've got enough lights pulling 150, if I add in the 550, we're right at about 700. So, that's pretty good for this guy. I expect it to sag down and give us a little voltage. Oh, yes. Yeah, complain about it, that's fine. All right, it says 680. Um, realistically, it's probably closer to 700, at least, you know, when I was using the, kil the kilowatt. Um, that's pretty good. It's not getting too hot. Of course, we're not doing this for too long, either. Oh. And you can see we're at 11.7. Um, uh, we're starting to complain about the low voltage. <laughs> the lights get a bit brighter when <laughs> turn off the load. Also expected with these cheaper inverters, um, that's the voltage sagging down. They can't drive those light bulbs as well. They're regular incandescent light bulbs. Turn those off. And you know, listen to the fan. The moment I, t I turn off the load, when, it, when this thing gets down to zero, or le actually less than 40 watts, that fan just kicks right off, which tells me it's software controlled. It's not, uh, th though they might have other things in here that are temperature controlled for that fan to kick on. Uh, when it's started cold, uh, the fan won't run until it's above 40 watts or so. I'd like to see something you know that's more temperature driven, maybe a little bit smarter. Like I was just driving 700 watts, so this thing is, is getting warmer. But the moment I drop it down, it cuts it off. It'd be nice if it stayed on a little bit longer and cooled some of the, the electronics down it down back to something closer to ambient. So all told, I'm pretty pleased with this. Uh, I won't bore you. I'll do a lengthier test than that. I'll probably parallelize some batteries so I get a little bit more current, so that this thing doesn't hit that low low battery as, as quickly, um, though uh, in its application it'll probably match to something about this size, so it's, it's you know, more true to how it'll run, but uh, just so that I feel comfortable leaving this in a box somewhere running for 24 hours, I'll, I'll, I'll test it for as long as it takes maybe to drain two of these batteries down to 10 volts, and then if it survives, it doesn't catch on fire or melt or, you know, stop producing AC voltage, I'll call it good, and uh, carry on with it. So um, I'll also get back to repairing the other uh, four or five of these that I've got lying around so that I can repurpose them. But it's been fun. Uh, luckily, <laughs> uh, these weren't huge, plagued with huge issues. Either somebody hooked them up backwards or overdrove them to you know the, a high load. They probably read the manufacturer's claim of, uh, you know, probably double this in, in, in surge wattage and tried to push it for that. And some of those are rated in fractions of a second that it'll do th those, those uh, high currents and anything over that's going to pop a fuse. And that's, I lucked out and bought these on eBay with apparently blown fuses. I haven't found one of this model, the 750 model, that didn't just need a fuse replaced. So, it ended up being very affordable. <laughs> affordable and fun to, to play with and get popped open so that you can you know, see the guts of these things and start playing around with them. Um, let me power this off before I zap myself. And I'll go over 
some of the things I'm thinking about doing. Uh, this is later. Another another video I'll do soon um, is what this. Uh, it's, I've got another random project of mine that um, is going to utilize these inverters, either you know a couple of them in parallel, or I mean not literally in parallel, but like each one going its own res re respective uh, AC socket. Um, or, or just maybe one of these 750s. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, um, but I'm trying to make them the exterior. I want to hide all this stuff on the inside of the box, like a, a tool chest, and um, I want to make it look pretty. So I might desolder these or extend this ribbon cable here and run this little logic board. Not leave the, the ACs, maybe even hardwire them. I don't know, uh, but run this little logic board. Uh, with its respective buttons and display to the outside of the box if I can make it look nice. Um, looking around my garage here, I don't see anything that's going to make that look really nice, so I might skip that altogether. Um, but this is going to go into like a little project box. There's been a lot of them. Um, I've, almost, I'm almost, I've, I've almost hesitated making the video because there's a ton of them on YouTube, uh, so this would be yet another portable power solution um, that you could either solar charge or plug into the grid and top off uh, so that when you're without electricity, you'd be able to power some lights or charge some cell phones or something like that. Um, so thank you for joining me and helping to load test one of these Schumacher 750-watt modified sine wave inverters. Uh, this is Julian's Random Projects, and thanks for watching.